Hey guys, uh, let's get started with Robot C. So uh, you're first going to open up your computer, log in, and you're going to look for an icon that looks like that. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Uh, I'm going to find that icon right here, up there, I guess. Uh, double click, and then Robot C should open. Now you should see something that looks um, kind of like this. A splash screen should look just like that. If you notice in the upper right, there's a little X. If you can, you can close that if you want. It just closes that that area right there. Uh, the very first thing that we need to do is make sure that we have the correct uh, the correct settings for our um, for our robot. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is you want to click. Uh, let's see here. Where it is it? Uh, under robot, and then where it says. Vex IQ, excuse me, where it says platform type, you're going to select Vex Robotics, Vex 2.0 Cortex. Okay, then go back under robot again. We're going to say Vex Cortex communication mode is USB only. All right, back under robot, platform type, and then you're going to select natural language PLTW. Okay, so that should have uh, pretty much set up everything the way we need it set up. Uh, then let's go ahead and get our first file going. So if you click new file, and I'm going to increase my font size to make it easier for you to see. Uh, the very first thing we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and set up a motor. Uh, we have to tell the program that we have a motor. So let's go motor and sensor setup. All right, and then we're here in motors automatically. Now, if it loads like this, just go ahead and go to motors at the top, the top tab right there. Okay, the first motor, I'm gonna name it, is just first motor. Now, you notice it if you can see it in here, uh, that I did F-I-R-S-T lowercase and then capital M. Uh, we call that camel case, like a, the humps on a camel's back. And camel case allows you to write some stuff and not have too much, uh, excuse me, not have spaces, okay? So you can write uh, things and not have spaces because you can't have spaces. Okay, so next thing, uh, what you need to do is click under motor type, select, it's a 393. So select VEX 393 motor and then just click OK. You'll see that it automatically generates the text for us up here. So that's automatically generating the code that we need to tell the program, to tell the uh, robot that we have a motor, okay? Now, anytime we make a, a big change to our program, I want you to use this button here that says Compile Program. And click Compile Program and then down here you should see it should say compiled successfully okay well it's going to make me want to it's, it wants to me to save it first so make sure you go to onedrive and go under students you I, I don't have that folder here go under students select your folder if you've made one if you haven't made a folder yet create a folder uh, and then let's let's name it your last name so my last name is Johnston, so I'll put in Johnston and I'll save it there. Okay, so now it says it's compiled on March 6th at 1421. Uh, the time is off on my computer. It might be off on your computer too. So just look in the lower right hand portion. See my computer saying it's 221, that's 1421. So uh, it compiled successfully, that's the point. All right, so now uh, the Command for starting a motor, and we're not going to really use these things off to the, to the left here, so I'm going to move this over. The command is real simple. A lot of this is simple language, right? Is start motor. Now, I, I don't know if you noticed, um, what we call Robot C is called an IDE, an Integrated Developer Environment. 
And an IDE uh, has tools in it that help you format your text, help you code. Kind of like when you're in Google Docs and it makes a suggestion or it does a spell check or if you're in Microsoft Word and it helps you format a paragraph or create a resume, things like that. But an IDE is designed for a developer uh, or a programmer so that it's anticipating the kind of things that you're gonna do in writing your code. So when I first started typing, S-T-A-R, it already started to say, hey, I recognize that there might be a command like that. So start motor. Now it's the first one selected. If I needed the second one, I'd push the arrow down key, but I do want that first one, so I'll just push enter. And then it finishes uh, that command for me. Now I'm gonna say start motor, I have to specify what motor. So I open parenthesis, and again, it's noticing that I already have uh, something there. So I'll say first motor. Now, if your motor does not appear in that list, if your variable does not appear in that list, it's probably because you have not clicked compile program. When we added this motor here, we called it first motor, the IDE didn't have that information in the system until you clicked compile program. So like I said, every time you make any kind of big change, you probably want to say compile program um, just so that it updates the IDE, okay? So we got first motor, I just push enter, and then I'm going to do comma space 127. 127 is the fastest the motor will go. I really not sure why it's 127. I'm sure there's a good explanation, but zero to 127. So if you did 65, that'd be about half, uh, half speed for the motor, okay? So I wanna do 127. I want the motor to go full speed. And then the way that you end a sentence in English is with a period, right? Well, we're not gonna use a period. We're gonna use a semicolon. In programming, most programming, well, I don't know if I should say most, but a lot of programming ends with a semicolon. So there you go. That tells the program that that line of information is complete. You see, Robot C, uh, just like a lot of other programs, they don't really care too much about spaces or line breaks, uh, but what they do care about is telling it that the command is done. So that's what that semicolon right there is telling it. Okay, if I were to run this program right now, and, and in fact, let me go ahead and upload it. So I have, uh, I have my, uh, my little uh, handy dandy uh, test bed already plugged in and ready to go. I'm gonna make sure I have my power turned on so that the, green, the lights are green, power's turned on, and the USB is plugged in. Okay, then I'm gonna go ahead and click Download to Robot. Now this little thing should come up. It says no communication mode. Okay, if there's no communication, let me go back here. If there's no communication, then you'll need to just click okay. Unplug the USB. Okay, so you're gonna unplug the USB, turn the Cortex off. So it's actually off right now. Okay, then plug it back in. Let's say not enough power. Okay, so I haven't plugged my, uh, I haven't plugged it into the right spot on the computer. So let me see if I can find another cable and plug it into the right spot on the computer. All right, let's do this. Right, I'll just take this over here. We get a different USB cable. They're all over the place. I have tons of them. Okay, here we go. Plug that in to the side of the computer. Here we go. And voila. Okay. Now, I've got it plugged in. And then I'm gonna go back up here and say, and actually, you guys are actually always going to do firmware update first. Since, since it's the first time that I've plugged this Cortex into this computer, I'm going to click firmware download. It'll say something like that. Click OK. OK. 
Okay, so firmware download, it doesn't take very long. Uh, all right, and done. Okay, it says completed successfully. All right, now we'll go ahead and upload. So it says download to robot. There you go, download to robot. Okay, and then you do have to click Okay, what's it saying here? It's saying uh, the battery's not powered on. So I gotta turn it on. So boom, there it goes. Click okay. Now if I click start, it's gonna run the program. But look, it still says start. I clicked it. Hey, what's it doing, right? So what it's doing is it is actually starting. There's just nothing for it to do. It's saying start motor but then the program's over immediately. So it's not gonna end up doing anything. So what I have to do is right here, I have to actually tell it to wait. Otherwise, it's just gonna end the program. So I'll do wait, open parenthesis, and the number two, that means two seconds, close parenthesis, and then a semicolon. Okay, compile program. Hey, it compiled, download to robot. All right. Now, I said that the motor was in motor port one, so I'm just gonna double check. It is in motor port one, so I'm okay. All right, if I click start, hey, there it went. It went for two seconds. Okay, then from then, you know, from there on, I can, I can close this. I can go in here, I can change the number of seconds, uh, and then I could go down here, I could change uh, the speed of the motor. Uh, for instance, I could say uh, start motor. I could say st stop motor. Uh, let's see. Stop motor and then first motor. Okay, so stop motor. And then I could say wait for one second. And then maybe start motor again. Let's say half speed. 65. And... Let's say wait again. And we'll make this one go for four seconds. Okay, compile program, it compiles. Now I wanna show you, I wanna make a mistake here. Let me, let me just change something. Okay, if I say compile program, let's see, compile program, there we go, all right. So it's saying it can't be performed because there's errors in the program. You see the X, the red X's mean it's no good. It has to be fixed or else it won't, it, can't, it won't even upload it. The yellow arrows are saying, or the yellow X's are saying that it, it, you know, it's, uh, needs to be fixed, but it's not a big deal. Like it'll still work because the IDE is actually going to fix it for you. The program is going to fix it for you. But this yellow one down here, if, if I got out of the way here, it says missing a little semicolon. It's been automatically inserted by the compiler. But I don't want you to do that. I want you to fix your errors. So let's go ahead and change that. And then right here, uh, you can't wait for DF. So something's wrong. So we'll say wait for four. So that should be a number in there. All right. And then... Download to robot. Notice I didn't I didn't click compile first. When you say download to robot, it does automatically compile it. Um, but it's probably a good idea for you just to compile compile it first. Okay. So now I'm going to click start. Hey. Oh. Oh, there we go. I don't know if you can hear the difference in the in the motor sound. Okay. But check it out. It. It, while it was running, you could see the green line going through here. So it's going stop motor. Notice that green line is there. It's waiting two seconds before it executes that stop motor command. Okay, so there you go. It's waiting there for the two seconds. And then it's waiting that one second. And then it goes down here and waits the four seconds before the program is over. All right. So go ahead and give that a shot. Maybe pause the video, uh, try it. And of course, you can pause the video as you go whenever you want. Um, but this might be a good spot to stop and just make sure you can do it, okay? All right. Let's talk about loops. Okay, loops are very important. Um, they allow us to do all different kinds of things 
Um, but the, mainly, a loop is just going to keep your program running. So a loop is something we say while. While this condition, whatever is in there, while whatever is in there is true, then we're going to run what's inside that while loop. Okay, so we're going to say while true. Okay, while true, and then open curly brace. You might not have seen this before. It is a curly brace. A curly brace is on the keyboard. It is just above the probably the quote sign. Uh, it's probably right next to the P, right below the plus sign. If you haven't found it yet, you should be able to see it. And it's the bracket keys. Okay, the bracket keys. And you have to hold shift. Okay, and those are called curly braces. Okay. So I'm going to do an open curly brace, and I have to go all the way down to where I want my loop to finish, and I'm going to put it there. That's a closed curly brace. Okay. Now, in order to kind of tell what's going on with our code, we use indentation. And so if I just click Fix Formatting right here, the IDE, Robot C, the IDE, the Integrated Developer Environment, is going to change that text for me to make it easier for me to see and understand. And you'll notice that this curly brace is now lined up with the beginning of that while statement. So that's helping me see that all of this stuff is the same command. Everything in there is the same command. Okay, so now while true is always true, true is always true. Another way of writing this would be one is equal to one. Okay, you can't, you, you, this is a comparator. This statement, equal, equal, is comparing. Is one equal to one? Yes. Is it always equal to one? Yes. If I said is one equal to zero, or one is equal to 54,675, that would be false. And so it would never run ever because that those though that statement is never true but one is equal to one is always true then just the easier way of doing it is to just write true you're just saying hey the statement is true so go ahead all right and it's just syntax you just have to have it to tell it that the while statement needs to be run all right let's give this a shot and see what happens but you know what i can tell you already we're gonna need to say stop motor uh, and then wait a second. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put it here. Oops, I didn't copy it. Okay, stop motor and wait a second. I'm gonna put it here. There we go. And I just did control C, control V. All right, and then download the robot. All right, we got a robot here. All right, say start. Oh, there we go. One. And slow. And wait a second. And fast. And slow. And wait a second. And fast. And wait a second. Then slow. Then wait a second. And this is just going to continue on and on and on forever because we have it set up in a loop. And click stop. Go ahead and close my program. And I'm good for now. Okay, so now go ahead and put your uh, statement, put, put it in a loop, okay? Uh, let's see. All right, another thing I want you to see is to try. That's the end of ninth period. Okay, so I want you to go ahead and type in right here under where it says task, right below task main. Remember, anything in these curly braces is all part of task main. Okay, that's what those curly braces are doing. They're encapsulating that part. Okay, so now that you have uh, that uh, statement, let's 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 make uh, our robot wait until we have hit uh, a button. So I'm going to add a sensor. So I'm going to go back to motors and sensor setup, and I have a couple different tabs up here. I have uh, VEX 2.0 analog, 
and I have VEX Cortex digital sensors. Okay, the difference between a digital and an analog sensor is that digital means on or off. A digital can only be one or zero, on or off. An analog can be a spectrum, can be somewhere in the middle. Okay, so when you do your uh, program, you need to remember which one you're dealing with, which kind of sensor you're dealing with. All right, so if you say a digital sensor is on or off, that's what we're going to use. We're going to use a button. So I'm going to call this my limit switch. Okay, I'm using camel case again. So limit switch. And then the type of sensor that it is, is a touch sensor. And that's all I need, so I'll click OK. Now, I put that in digital 1. So I need to come over to my robot here, my little test bed. And if I look real close, I can trace my little... Oh, I pulled it out. Okay, so I can trace. This is my button. Okay, I can trace it. I'm going to make sure that it goes into digital 1. Digital 1 can be kind of hard to find. You want to make sure you don't put it into analog 8. So... Uh, this little this little guy right here, you, you can see kind of how it goes, so you just need to be careful. Do not force it, jam it. Those little pins are brittle, and they can break off, okay? So there we go. Got it in digital one. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and do some coding uh, to be able to use that switch. Okay. So here we go. So I'm going to say until bump. It's an interesting command. Uh, it's built into the programming language, but until bump, and then I'm gonna say which which one. Well, you see how it says digital one there? It doesn't have my limit switch. I could use digital one, but see, uh, I've specified the name of digital one. And the thing is, if I ever wanted to change what port limit switch was in, I would then have to go down and change every single part that says digital one. But if right here, if I selected, now I'm going to compile program so that limit switch shows up in there. If I put limit switch in there and up here or in the motor and sensor setup, if I changed what digital port that was in, then it would still, then automatically would know in my code what port that limit switch is in. Okay, so now I have limit switch. Uh, so until bump limit switch. That's it. That's all I need. All right, and so let's let's try it. Download the robot. Let's give it a shot. See what happens. Okay. So I need to click start. All right, here we go. So now it's waiting. It's not going to run the, the, the loop until I hit this limit switch. So I'll hit it. There we go. And now it's going to continue in that loop. It's totally stuck in that loop. Okay, and it'll just keep going and going and going. Now, if I wanted to make it so that it ran the cycle every time I had to push that button, I could also put an until bump. So I'm going to copy. Actually, I'm just going to cut that. Okay. And then inside of here, there you go. I can put until bump. There we go. Okay. So I can put until bump right there. And what it's going to do is it's going to run through this, get down here. And then go back to until bump. And now you don't even need that weight. Okay. But I'll leave it there anyway. All right. So now I'm going to download that to the robot. Let's give it a shot. And this is a lot of what your programming is going to be. Change something, upload it, see what it does. Change something, upload it, see what it does. Okay. So it's still waiting for me to push this. So I'll push it. All right. So it ran for... The high speed and then the low speed. Ooh, and then it's gonna wait for me to push the button again. So right now it's just waiting for that. So there you go. All right, and it'll just always be waiting for you to push that button, and it'll just be 
stuck in that loop. Um, because if you didn't have that loop, okay, if we didn't have this, I'll just delete that and that. Okay, we'll upload it or download it to the robot. If we didn't have that loop there, it's still going to wait for me to push the button. And I'll go ahead and push the button. It's still going to work. It's going to start the motor, stop, it's going to run for a few seconds. Okay. But that's it. And you notice now it says start because the, the program has, has run. I can push the button, nothing's going to happen. So that's why, and I wonder if I do undo or control Z. Yep, I can do control Z and I'll put it right back. Okay. So now if I do that, my whole program is in a loop. So it'll keep on running that program. And there it goes. And it's waiting for me to push the button again. Okay. All right, so that should be good for everybody today. Uh, make sure that you are able to complete this. Uh, another quick thing is once you have uploaded it, if you have it set for USB only, then when you, or if you unplug it from the computer, okay, you're gonna wanna shut it down by turning the power off. And so it's not plugged into the computer at all right now. Nothing's plugged in. Now if I turn it on, it's gonna boot, it's gonna read that program that you uploaded to it. And so now it's gonna have that program installed. Now if I push that button, notice that it's not running from the computer at all. And now it should work again if I push this button because right now it's in that loop and those buttons are, those lights are blinking telling you that the program is running. There you go. So the ultimate test is I want you guys to create this program, upload it to your Cortex, and then be able to unplug it from the computer and push the button and get it to do that. Okay, sounds good. Well, if you have any questions, I'm here to help.